Hi, and welcome. I'm Billy Mitchell, Editor-in-Chief of FedScoop, and I'm joined now by Dina Flynn, Federal Capture Director for Cisco. Dina, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Billy. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to our conversation about digital transformation uh, in conjunction with Cisco's FedForward Summit. Um, and, you know, digital transformation is a big trend um, in recent years, especially over the past year with everything that's been going on with the pandemic. So I'd like to start there. Um, you know, let's kind of start to figure out if we can characterize, you know, how have federal agencies been able to move forward in their journey to digital transformation over the past year? Well, I think part of it was they were forced to. Once it was, wait a minute, where, where are my workers going to be and how are they going to be connecting in and what are we going to do? So I think um, Gartner just put out a, uh, a kind of emerging tech and what some uh, organizations are doing was all about they were more willing to jump into pilots and do things they probably would have never approved or, or pushed the ideas. But then when it got to be, how are we going to connect? How is everybody going to keep sharing data and do it in a safe way? I think that started that transformation, or I would say accelerated it, so that they were going, all right, I guess I'm going to have to look at these options and how am I going to make sure everyone is on the right page. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest thing that's leaped forward in the last year was the willingness to say, maybe that could work. Because uh, there's 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 not a lot of choices and, and we weren't able to go in or even um, be able to come and gather safely. So um, I love it that I just hope they continue this momentum as we go in and we're actually back face to face, or even if if a lot of the expectation now is somewhat of a hybrid opportunity. So maybe we're always going to have a certain number of people at home. And I think that continues to raise how is the information secure? How is access to systems secure? So that'll keep pushing that transformation, uh, transformation faster. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, and I think, you know, as agencies backs have been against the wall, sort of, and they've tried to uh, transform, they'll look to sustain it. And one of the ways they are going to look to sustain it is with new emerging technologies that they're looking to right. adopt. And uh, would be curious to hear what emerging technologies on the horizon are kind of set to make a major impact across federal operations and why do you think those are important? Um, I think some of it because of all the rapid technology and all the different applications that are being built across different pieces of government. I think um, the other piece of it is edge computing. You want to have all the information, all the computing happening where all the data is being collected. And so in order to do that, you've got to bolster your networks, make sure they're secure, but also the right information is getting to the right places. So all of this, I would say data um, accessibility and data capture, you got to do it um, so store it well, keep it safe, make sure the right people are then getting to it. So I think all of that is going to change up the way we look at some emerging tech. Um, and so edge computing may not be as, as exciting, but it's necessary. So as, um, as they're saying, the more and more applications will be developed and pushed out on every network. Well, then how are you going to make sure that information is getting where it's supposed to be? Yeah, no, I agree. It's something we've heard a lot about. Um, so, one of the other big trends at this year's summit was uh, how can a platform, how can a platform centric view of IT really empower agencies? Um, and so, I, I'd be curious to to hear a little bit more about that and how it helps agencies to achieve uh, mission success. Um, I think the way we're seeing so much of it is what is those services are being delivered to citizens, especially as well as, for instance, our veterans, what are they getting and where is it coming to? Um, so I think some of that is, is looking at all of it together is, okay, if I have to get information to the edge, I got to bring it back. All these applications are trying to do it. So I think that entire, how, how you measure mission success is maybe changed a bit. So it's actually what is happening here in my house. Instead of what could I go to, what line can I go get in, or what you know place do I have to go drop off forms, et cetera. So I think that measurement of success is different. So I think that mission success has has changed a bit in people's eyes. Um, and some of those, you know, upgrading of those systems and and making sure they work right because you want all those applications to be delivered right. I know for us, IRS, I want to make sure sure my data is, is safe when it's going in. And so that to me is not just did they get it, but is it going to be safe? And is then the person that maybe is working on my and my tax return, is that going to be safe the access to that information and where is it going? So I think it maybe has changed my mind when they think of mission success. I'm going, well, yeah, to me, I hope so as well. Um, so as we close out here, Dina, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the new need to support a workforce, whether it's hybrid, whether it's fully remote, whether it's back in office. But, um, you know, how federal agencies work to support their 
workforces and, and make sure that they're succeeding in their mission anywhere, any place, anytime amid COVID-19? I think it's the exception that um, everything is going to be hybrid. I don't think there's going to be one way to look at anything going further, uh, going forward. So I think in, to have success, you're going to have to look at going, well, we're going to have to have an option for somebody who's still going to be working remotely. We're going to have to have an option for those inside the office, and we're going to have to make sure it's safe. Because even though today we may um, jump back and say, okay, it's now safe for X amount of people, or even the full workforce to return, let's say September, what if something happens again next year? And what are those systems in, in place to make sure we can go back to or continue to do this hybrid model? So I think that change, it takes a lot of people, I would say your strategic plans completely shifted. And what is your disaster plans completely shifted? Um, and so that mindset change is probably the biggest thing that will help them try to achieve success, especially when it comes to that remote worker. Yeah, big transformation there. But uh, Dina, it's been a pleasure chatting with you um, and, and, and I hope we can do it again soon. But thank you so much. Thank you, Billy. I appreciate all of your time and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, you too.